Today I'm going to talk about why happiness is the wrong goal for us to have. So stay with me. So I think we all probably want to be happy in life and I'm not here today to talk about why there's something wrong with being happy. I think, you know, if you could say to me that, David, I'm really happy in my life, I, I wouldn't say to you that you have the wrong goal. My issue with having goal, happiness as a goal in life is that it typically doesn't work. And being happy is fantastic. There's no doubt about it. And I'm not even saying here that happiness is the wrong goal to have or that happiness doesn't exist. Happiness absolutely exists. And I think we probably all know that on one level because we've had moments in life when we've been happy. But if we go through life with, I want to be happy, I want to be happy, that's going to lead to problems. And I'll explain why here. I'm actually going to talk about five reasons why that's going to be a kind of a frustrating approach to take. And I'm going to talk about an alternative goal to set instead. So the first reason I think happiness is to be happy is the wrong goal for us is because the concept happy, to be happy, happiness is very abstract. It's too abstract. So if we have it as a goal and we're aiming for something and we don't really know exactly precisely what it is we're trying to get with that, it's too abstract, it's not well defined, you're never going to get there. There are so many definitions of what it means to be happiness or what happiness is. You ask 100 people, you'll get 100 different answers. One really interesting thing I saw recently, there was a documentary about uh, these hunter-gatherers in Tanzania, in Africa. And they're the last, or one of the last hunter-gatherer societies on earth. There's like 1,500 of them or something. But there's very few of these people left. But they, the documentarian asked one of the hunters in that tribe, what is happiness? And his answer was, happiness is when I find meat for my people. Okay, now that answer to us probably doesn't resonate very much. But the point being here is that his answer was a fine answer. But everybody's answer is going to be different. So I guess if we're going to search for happiness, it's difficult because we don't really know exactly what it is, or at least we can't turn to other people to find a good working definition that's going to work for us personally. So the first problem with happiness as a goal is that it's too abstract and it's ill-defined. Now, the second thing, even if we, we said, well, I'll create happiness on my own terms, okay, we have another problem with that. Okay, I'm not going to use anybody else's definition. I'm going to use my own definition of what it means. But here's a problem we have with that. If, you, if you're going to search for this thing and try and find it, how many real moments of happiness have we had in life? In order to know what it is that you're going to find or, or what you're looking for, we kind of have to know it well. It can't be abstract. And even if we're going off our own experiences with happiness, how many hours of our life have we spent in a state of real happiness? The... Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, he talks about, um, I think it's a 10,000 hour rule he talks about in that book, to become proficient or an expert in anything, it takes about 10,000 10, hours of direct experience with that thing. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not sure if I've had 10,000 hours of pure happiness to know exactly what it is, to set it as a goal for my life, to go out there and, and chase it. So this, the second point is, even if we're going off our own definition, do we really have enough direct experience with happiness to know exactly what it is? So that's another kind of point against setting happiness as the goal in life. Now, the third point I would say on this, and this is maybe the most important one of all, I'm going out there into my life and happiness is my goal. What, and I'm trying to make it happen. I'm trying to cause, bring about happiness in my life. There's an assumption there that happiness can be caused. And I think it's a big assumption. What if happiness can't be caused? So 
the way I like to think of happiness is happiness is like a spontaneous symptom of something else. In other words, we can't directly create happiness. I'm not saying we're helpless. There's not anything we can do. I'm going to talk about that soon. But a way to think about this, it's a spontaneous symptom. It can't be controlled, brought about through control. It can't be directly man manipulated into existence, happiness. A way we know this is true is, imagine if I asked you this. Imagine I said, okay, wake up tomorrow and I want you to do one thing. And that thing is to make a day full of happiness for yourself. Would you feel confident about doing that? I, I think most of us would feel not that confident. I mean, if, if happiness is our goal in life, why, why aren't we happy right now, today, if it was that easy to bring about directly? An alternative question is, what if I asked you tomorrow to wake up and instead of making a day full of happiness for yourself, to make a day full of misery? And negative emotion. Now we wouldn't want to do that but I think we would agree that that would be easier to manipulate and bring into existence than a day of real happiness for ourselves. So my point is we're all out there trying to create happiness directly, do this, do that in order to bring about happiness. This is the thing that's going to make me happy, it's the next job, it's the more money, it's that thing I want to buy online, whatever, next relationship. And invariably we find, you know, this isn't really working that well. So our attempts to directly manipulate or create happiness don't work. And maybe it doesn't have a direct cause. Okay, now that sounds pretty bleak, but I'm going to talk now about an alternative. You see, we can, we do feel comfortable bringing about that negative experience, okay? I mean, if you really put your mind to it and you wanted to create a day for yourself full of negative emotion, I mean, you'd probably, if you really had to do that, you'd have it done within an hour. You know, it's so easy for us to do that. So the reason happiness is a bad goal is that it's relying on something um, we don't really have that much experience with. Maybe it can't be caused, but here's what we should think about. We do have knowledge. This is the fourth point here. We already have existing knowledge that is much more useful than this thing about, well, my, my existing knowledge about happiness. What is it that we have? We should be using our existing knowledge, which we're not experts in happiness, don't have that much direct experience with it, but we should be using our direct experience of emotional suffering or conflict. That is something, and this is maybe a little bit hard to hear, but I think a lot of us probably have upwards going on over 10,000 hours of emotional pain or conflict inside us. <laughs> we know what that feels like. But here's the thing, that is not a bad thing necessarily. That is something that is very, very useful information. Instead of seeing these negative emotions that we experience as a bad thing, what if they are actually sort of pointers to something for us? We have direct knowledge of those things and if we can start to listen into what that conflict inside us is saying or that emotional pain is saying, that is where our attention and focus needs to be. The final point here, which is related to this, is that instead of happen, having happiness as our goal in life, our goal, we have a better goal, which is to listen into this emotional suffering and this inner conflict. And our goal now becomes I'm simply going to work on ending this emotional conflict that I experience. And if we get good at that, and we get good at listening to this emotional conflict and get good at meeting these emotional needs for ourselves, there is this spontaneous symptom that just happens to pop up over here, which is called happiness. Now we don't manipulate it directly, but if we're listening into this emotional suffering inside us or this conflict and get to work meeting our emotional needs, we understand this, we can feel this directly already, these, this, this, these emotional signals in our body, then it's like happiness just has a habit of showing up all by itself. A way to think about this is like um, a little child, okay, a little baby or something. And that baby screams when its emotional needs are not being met. Now, 
when a baby or a small child is cries out and their emotional pain is heard, it's validated, and then it's met, they're taken care of, the child just goes about its life very happily. And it doesn't sit around wondering what is the purpose of life or um, how can I make myself happy. The child just is happy. We tend to think of ourselves as a li little bit more evolved than that, but essentially, if we can really, like a lot of times I ask people, like, what are your emotional needs? And they're like, well, I have no idea what they are. Now, they may already be meeting some of their emotional needs, just not being aware of what they are. But it's very important for us to, to become aware of what it is that I need emotionally, to feel not necessarily happy, but to feel balanced inside myself where there's no inner conflict. It's this inner conflict that really takes us away from an experience of happiness. So our job becomes, okay, well, what's causing the conflict? I'm not going to try and manipulate a happy situation. What's already taken place right here under my own nose? And if I can become really, really curious about that. And, and the thing is, people become very hopeless because first of all, maybe they don't know what their emotional needs are. And then they think to themselves, well, even if I do know what they are, I don't think I can meet them. It is very, very possible to meet your emotional needs. Our emotional needs are, yes, often in a state of conflict. Maybe some of these emotional needs become a dominant need and maybe we repress and ignore other ones. But once we, we find a way to validate all of the needs that we have inside us and start to see them as these inner children that we have and start to self-parent them, in other words, finding balance, validating them all, not picking favorites, not ignoring some over others. Not necessarily sharing, giving them all exactly the same amount of time and energy necessarily, but validating them all and giving them all something in a way that's not going to overwhelm you. Now, there's a kind of a happy experience there that happens, which just I think is called happiness over here, but it's not directly caused. Again, you can't wake up and go and make yourself happy directly by doing something. We have to listen in to our emotional body. That's really the missing piece with this. It's, okay, I don't know, I'm not gonna read about this in a book about happiness, and I'm not gonna to listen to somebody else tell me how to be happy. I'm gonna to listen to my, my body, essentially. My emotional body is a very, very important indicator of how I can actually meet and end, uh, meet my emotional needs and conflict, and then just happen to experience this thing called happiness. So to recap here, it's too abstract. Happiness is too abstract a concept. We don't really know what it is. Um, it can't be caused directly, even if it is a goal. We already have existing knowledge that we should be using, which is our emotional body. And we have a much better goal anyway, which is just to simply end inner conflict. So my the book I wrote recently, it's a shorty book. You can get it for free on my website. It's It offers like a model for, okay, well, if you don't know what your emotional needs are, start with this model. There's five emotional needs I talk about, which is responsibility or security, meaning purpose, creativity, taking care of yourself physically, some exercise maybe, there's reflection and spontaneity slash relaxation. This need tends to be the black sheep in the family. This need tends to be the, the golden child that gets all the attention, certainly psychological uh, attention. But if we can find some kind of degree of balance with that, I am of the opinion that we tend to experience happiness on a much more regular basis. So if you want to check that out, it's on my website. I'll put the link for it below. But um, those are my thoughts on happiness, guys. I hope that's useful information. Again, I'm not saying that happiness doesn't exist. Happiness absolutely exists. Is it a good thing to be happy? 100%. I think it's very important to be happy in life. It's just a question of having it as my goal may be leading us in the wrong direction, away from the emotional indicators that are indirectly going to get us there. So hope that's useful information, guys. And uh, as always, thanks for joining me here. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.